So George, facial hair. Mm. Big topic. It is, yeah. Um, explain why tight fitting products are not suitable um, for um, beards and stubbles. And, yeah. and you know, uh, there's a trend in beards and stubbles and the um, sort of marketplace and companies. Yep, yeah, yeah. And um, people like to look a certain way. Yep, um, certainly. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, so case in point here, um, you know, facial hair seems to be a big trend at the moment. Um, uh, and people got facial hair for, for fashion reasons, religious reasons, well, whatever it may be. So the products that I spoke about previously, which, which we call tight-fitting masks, yes. can't be worn by those that have got facial hair around that seal to the face. So imagine if I've got a respirator on now, I can't have any facial hair, which is bas basically impeding that seal. Right. You can imagine if there is any facial hair, it's gonna um, impede the, the, the seal to the face, Air is always going to pay, take the path of the least resistance and tiny gaps that may be formed from, from the face seal and stubble will take air flow with particulates or with gas and vapours through. So um, people need to be clean shaven when wearing these tight fitting devices. Um, and that's reinforced by the Health and Safety Executive. Um, they, they brought out a research report probably two or three years ago, yes. um, RR1052. Um, and this basically looked at the effects of facial hair on the fit of products. Um, so it's publicly available, free, free, free to look at, but their, their kind of core message at the end reinforced the message that um, People who are wearing tight-fitting devices that seal to the face need to be clean-shaven around that, that seal. Uh, and then when it comes to, and this is a question that I get asked and you probably do as well, is, well, what does clean-shaven mean? Um, when we talk about clean-shaven, and again, we refer to the health and safety executive, they say that clean-shaven is eight hours before the start of the working shift. So that's a good message to kind of put out there to, to end customers and, and to end users. Um, so yeah. If you're wanting to wear anything tight fitting, you need to be clean shaven and clean shaven eight hours before the start of the working shift. Great. So George, we've spoken about tight fitting respiratory uh, and the need to be clean shaven. Can we discuss face fit testing? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, so face fit testing um, is a requirement, it does need to be done in, in the UK and Ireland if a wearer is wearing a tight fitting respirator, yes. so the products we spoke about a bit earlier. And the people that are being face fit tested on again, needs to be clean shaven for, for the reason that, that I mentioned a bit earlier. So a face fit test um, is really a, a validation to make sure that that face piece and the seal yeah. fits to your, your face shape and, and size. You know, you think of the population, um, we've all got different facial features, facial sizes, so one product is not going to fit everyone. So the face fit test really validates that you know, this product is going to fit you um, and a face fit test is, is the only way to, to, to actually Excellent. do that. So what's, what's, what types of face fit testing is that? Yep, so, so principally there, there's, there's two face fit testing um, tests that, 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 that we see in, see in the marketplace. So there's a test which is known as the qualitative taste test. Yeah. Um, so what would happen would be a wearer would, uh, there's, there's quite a lot to this, but just in short, um, a wearer would don their mask um, a hood would be put over to the uh, over the heads. An aerosol is sprayed into the um, into the hood. Now the particulate filter on the respirator they're wearing should capture um, all, if not all, of the uh, particulate aerosol that's coming through. Now if the wearer can taste that aerosol, and it'll either be a bitter or a sweet solution, yeah. it must mean that there's a gap in the face seal. Right. If there's a ga gap in the face seal. Um, during the test, then there's going to be a gap in the face seal when the product's worn. So in effect, right, that would so be a fail, yeah. and the product should not be should so not be worn. The person's exposed to the vapors, and they're exposed to whatever it is. In it's principle, so yeah. If yeah. if they're going to be exposed to the aerosol in the face fit test, yeah. then they're going to be exposed in the workplace. So um, it basically validates that that product is 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 going to fit you. And then the second method is the quantitative test, yes. um, and this uses often uses a machine called called a port count machine, a, a particle counting machine. And what would happen would be the wearer would put the mask on. Um, the mask would be probed, so there'd be a little probe on the inside of the mask, yes. and there'd be a second probe on the outside of the mask. And um, connected to those probes is, is, is the port count machine, so it's a particle counting machine. And that machine, in effect, is counting the particles on the inside of the mask and the particles on the outside of the mask. Now, if there's a high proportion of particles on the inside of the mask, it must mean that there's a gap in the face seal. And if there's a gap in the face seal, as I said, for the test, then there's going to be a gap in the face seal when the product's worn. And in effect, that, that would be a fail. So in both cases, you need a pass to then, for me, if I'm a fit tester, to say to you, Sean, yes, this is the product that you've, you've achieved that pass on. So both methods are um, as kind of suitable as, as, as each other. Um, I guess the benefit with the um, quantitative 
is it isn't subjective. So you're not relying on someone being able to taste or, or, or smell the solution. Um, but there is an upfront cost, quite a high upfront cost to purchase yeah. that equipment. So maybe suitable for, for organisations that have got occupational health that um, will go to lots of different sites or they've got big factories or they bring in consultants to do it. The qualitative uh, test, the, the, the taste test, is a little bit simpler to administer um, and maybe is a little bit more flexible in yeah. terms of where, where it can be done as well. customers can buy this kit from us. They can uh, do, so yeah. They can do their own testing. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, they can, yeah. Uh, on, on their site. Yeah, yeah, got this yeah. Equipment. yeah. Uh, only thing I would say um, is that a fit tester needs to be competent to, to carry out face fit yes. testing. So there's lots of training courses out there. Uh, we, we run training courses, there's independent you do a training courses. Trainer, is that right? We do as well, so we, we can come in and do training on, on how to use the uh, qualitative face fit test kit. Um, so we can show people how to use the kit. Um, there's also an accreditation course run by the British Safety Industry Federation, the BSIF, um, which will accredit you in terms of your competence to carry out face fit testing. So um, something that I'm accredited to, so I'm accredited on qualitative and quantitative, and it's something that is seen by the HSE as kind of good practice. It's not compulsory, doesn't need to be done, um, but it is seen there as, as kind of a, a good example to demonstrate your, your competence. Excellent. Thanks, George. No worries. Thanks. So, George, where can viewers find guidance surrounding face fit testing? Yep, sure. So, so there, there's there's quite a bit of guidance out there, um, but principally, I'd be looking firstly at the HSE website, the Health and yeah. Safety Executive website. So, they've got their fit testing document uh, or guidance document, which is INDG 479, uh, and that outlines um, the different types of fit testing that can be done, how they should be done, yeah. talk about competence, so making sure people are competent to, to carry out face fit testing. Um, so definitely that's the first thing I would say to look okay. at. In combination with that, the British Safety Industry Federation have also got a, a companion guide for the different fit testing methods to kind of go alongside with the, the HSE guidance. So again, I'd, those are the two kind of principal pieces yeah. of information to, to look at. Um, we've got lots of information on the website. We've actually got some YouTube videos which show uh, fit testing um, taking place. So, you know, if people want to learn a bit more, they, they're, they're welcome to go and do that. And I mentioned a bit earlier about the competence. So, fit testers need to be competent to carry out face fit testing. So, again, if someone is wanting to look along that line to be accredited, yeah. um, then again, looking at the uh, BSIF uh, web, web pages and the fit to fit um, part of their website, because that talks about competence and, and accreditation scheme. Excellent. So for those who aren't clean shaven, what are the options, George? Yep, yep. So typically we would we'd be looking at a, uh, a powered device, uh, a powered air system connected to a loose fitting head top. So um, I'll talk about the, the loose fitting head tops in a second, but just, just to give me a bit of an example of a, a powered air unit. So this is just one of quite a few that we've got in our range. Yeah. So this is the Versflow TR300 Plus. Particulate only, but we do gas and vapour versions and particulate combinations as well. So I thought it'd be good just to talk through um, the kind of basics of, of these types of products. So all of them are powered by a battery. So you, with this one, you can actually see the, 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 the power at the start of the day. And then inside the unit itself, we've got a motor. So the motor draws in air from the contaminated environment that you're working in, yeah. takes it through a filter. So in this case, a particulate filter. We also do a range of um, kind of in, internal uh, pre-filters, spark arresters as well. So when that is fitted and you turn the product on, you can feel the airflow coming through. So it's fil filtering that, that yeah. uh, contaminated, uh, contaminated air. Then it connects up to a breathing tube. And then that breathing tube will connect either to something like a, a soft head top that we've got here, yeah. or more of a kind of hard hat style head top like that. So. In effect, what you're doing is providing that wearer with, with filtered air. You know, it's taking it through a filter, similar to the products we, we mentioned a bit earlier. But the reason why these types of products can be worn by those with, with certain facial hair is down to the fact that it is a loose fitting device. So it's not relying on a seal to the face. Yeah. That air is forced air uh, out of the mask. You're not relying on a seal to the face. So people with facial hair like myself could wear a device That's like this. Safe. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So in terms of um, the, the different head tops that, that we've got available, there's just two that I wanted to talk about, but these are two of, of many that we've got in the range. So this is our um, M300 series. So what you'll notice is it's got a hard hat, it's got a B-rated visor, 
You can actually also put ear defenders on so there as what well. What kind of industries would this be um, popular for? Yep, uh, so industries really where hard hats are going to be needed or, or hard hats can compulsory. So um, construction, civil environments, um, railways, Angles. foundries as well. Yep, yep. So anywhere where it's going to be a hard hat is, is compulsory um, and also uh, visor protection needed as well. So nice versatile piece of, of kit there. And then the second type of product, and again, we've we got lots of different, different um, examples of this, is more of a, a kind of soft head top. So again, it's the same connection, so the powered air system can, can fit. <coughs> Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a soft head top, fabric head top, um, you've got some, some form of chemical resistance as well on, on certain fabrics as well. So in terms of typical environments for this, it might be pharmaceutical, um, it might be food manufacture, yeah. uh, but really it's anywhere where powered air uh, protection is needed with a loose fitting head top where a hard hat maybe isn't. So you can yeah. start it's thinking gives about it. gives them the option, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, and, and I think that's, that's the kind of message of this. Um, the powered air unit is providing the protection uh, and then that is complemented with, with different head tops for, for different applications. Excellent. Thanks for listening to us on this issue. George, thanks for coming along. Not at all. The products. Thanks, thanks uh, very much. Your uh, valuable sort of expertise on this subject. Not at um, all. And I hope you, if you found it all very useful. RS Components and 3M would like to thank you for your time. Think safety, think RS. <laughs>